Today I want to show you two different ways that you can create a focal point and add some depth in your watercolour paintings. Some of my patrons have asked me if I do a painting of a snake so I found a suitable photo that I could use on wildlife reference photos. This photo was taken by Michelle Kaiser. Because the python has got this beautiful contrasting pattern on its skin, I knew that if I was to paint that pattern in great detail, as I see it on the photo, it would be really busy and difficult to look at. So what I thought I'd do is focus on the python's head and try to bring that forward in the painting. To do that, I did two different things. The first was to increase the tonal contrast on the front section of the python and decrease the contrast on the rest of its body. So I made the head and the front section a lot darker than the rest of the python. The second thing I did was to combine hard found edges at the front with soft lost edges on the back of the python. By paying attention to those two things, contrast and edges, I was able to create depth and a focal point on my painting. And hopefully the viewer's eye will go straight to the python's head and then their eye will wander to the back and then drift back to the focal point at the front. That's what I hope to achieve anyway. This painting is painted on ash cold pressed watercolour paper. I used 300 GSM paper and I stretched it first. So let's have a look at it. I started by wetting the paper with some water. When I put the water on I extended it past the edges of the snake and that way when I put the paint on the paint will bleed out past the snake and create those soft edges. I painted a light wash of Naples yellow all over the top of the snake. And you can see some of that paint bleeding out past the edges. While that was wet, I started to paint some gold ochre on. And this is what it looked like after I'd finished that first wash. Then I re-wet this section of the snake and I started to paint some darker burnt umber areas and I also began to add some shadows. This shadow is a mix of French ultramarine and burnt umber. When that was dry I re-wet the brown pattern section of the snake and I started to paint on some sepia onto that area. I kept this sepia fairly pale, I didn't want it to be too dark. Then I left that area and I started to work on the front of the snake. Here I'm starting to paint in the brown spots. I've wet them with water and I'm painting on some burnt umber now. Here I can start to go darker with my colour. I'll do it gradually though, I don't want to darken it too quickly. I wanted to try and get a layer of paint all over it and then I'd come back and increase the contrast on the front section. I left that to dry and then I started to work on this section of the snake at the back. Here I'm wetting it with water and I want to start to paint the brown markings on the darker markings that surround the spots. I'm going to use sepia again but this time I want the sepia to bleed into those spots. So instead of putting the water carefully around them I'm putting the water over the top of them. So then when I start to put the sepia on around the spots you can see that the paint's bleeding into them. It creates those soft edges. I'm keeping my colour fairly pale here as well. I let that dry and I could see that it wasn't going to be dark enough. So then I re-wet the sepia area, so the areas around the spots. And I started to add more sepia. 
that left me with some hard edges and some soft edges around those lighter spots. I left that to dry and I came back over here and I did the same thing. I wet the areas around all the lighter spots and I painted sepia on. I made sure I didn't go too dark just yet. I will go darker later. I came back to the front then and I continued on with these lighter markings. I'm painting Naples yellow here and then I drop some burnt timber in while it's wet and the two colours bleed together. Then when I'd painted all those markings in, I re-wet the area around them and I started to paint some sepia on. When that layer was dry, I knew it was time to start darkening this sepia. So I re-wet those areas with water. And I started with some darker sepia. So there's a lot more pigment on my brush now. I painted that darker sepia as far as I wanted to and I started to fade it out as I worked my way back along the snake. Then I started to paint some Naples yellow over the top of some of the markings. I felt that they weren't bright enough, they looked a bit pale. Here I'm using my wash brush to paint some water over the top of the back of the snake. I'm trying to soften away some paint edges and also fade away the back of the snake. And I'm hoping that this will help to emphasize the focal point of the front of the snake. And this is what it looked like after I did that. You can see it's fading away at the back. I painted in the snake's head and then I started to darken some of these markings. So the sun or the light is coming from the left hand side and the right hand side of the snake is a bit darker. So I'm painting on these areas a bit darker so they look like they're in the shadow more. This is burnt umber that I'm using. Now I'm going to take my damp brush and soften that paint edge. When all of that was dry, I started to deepen the darkest areas on the front of the snake with some lamp black. I'm painting on wet paper here, and that keeps all the paint edges soft. So I'm putting the greatest contrast at the front of the snake where I wanted the focal point to be. And a lot of the paint edges at the front are hard, whereas a lot of the paint edges on the back of the snake are soft. So hard edges tend to bring the subject forward. So that's why I've concentrated them there at the front. Then I came up the back here and I started to add a bit more colour to the back of the snake. I wanted this area to be light, but I wanted the colour to fade away gradually. So I knew I needed just a bit more colour here in this area. So I'm working on wet paper here. This is sepia that I'm using. Because I wet the marking, the sepia bleeds into the edge of it. Then I decided that I wanted to add a bit of colour to the background. Not a lot, I just wanted the colour to softly bleed away from the snake. So here I'm wetting the background and I'm also taking the water onto the back edge of the snake. I'll use the same colours that I used on the snake, so this is gold ochre. And now I've got some sepia. I don't want it to be too dark, I only want it 
soft and subtle. And I take the tip of my round brush and I gently blend the colours together and fade it out so it moves back towards the top edge of the painting. And then I took my clean brush and I made sure there was no line forming on the snake. And this is what it looked like after I'd painted that little section of background. The snake is painted in warm colours, so I thought to increase the attention to the front of the snake that I'd paint the branch in cool colours. I used French ultramarine and burnt tumba to mix this grey and I painted the branch on wet paper and I allowed the colour to bleed off onto the background as well. I also dropped some gold ochre onto the branch to warm it up in places. After I finished painting the branch I could see that I need to darken some of these areas slightly. As I said I wanted the paint to fade away gently. So here I'm darkening the sepia areas. I'm working on the wet paper and the paint's bleeding back softly. It was mainly the sepia areas that I wanted to darken. Then I take my brush that's got no paint on it and I push the paint up into the water to soften the paintage. I did the same thing here on this section of the snake. I wet it with water first and then I put the sepia on. I need to redo up here. It's still not dark enough so I'll give it another layer. Here I'm painting a little bit of gold ochre on. I put the paint on with one brush and then I use my other brush with no paint on it to soften the edges further. So I kept adjusting things and darkening areas that needed to be darkened until I was happy with it. And when I was finally happy I took the washi tape off and I cut the gummed tape from the board. And there it is finished. I plan to make a full length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon site soon. Ish. Soonish. I've got a few more tutorials to get done before I do this one. There's all of these to get through first. So have patience with me, they are coming. I hope this was useful to you. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week with a new video. Today I want to show you my snake. That doesn't sound right. Today I want to show you my python, 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 python. Today I've got a snake painting that I want to show you. Today I've got a snake painting that I want to show you. I want to show you how I created depth. Today I've got a snake painting that I want to show you. And I'll show you how I paint.
Today I've got a snake painting that I want to show you. And I want to show you, oh, I want to show you, I want to show you, and I want to show you. Because the python has this beautiful contrasting pattern on its skin, I knew that if I was to paint that pattern in great tea, tea towel, great tea towel, paint that pattern in great detail just as I see it on the photo that it would be really difficult and busy it would be really difficult and busy no, it would be really busy and difficult to look at and edges I was able to create depth and a focal point on my painting 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 oh come on Louise 